QuickBooks Online 2021. Forward contracts for speculation that foreign currency will weaken. Overview. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online Multiple Currencies Problem 3 practice file. In prior presentations, we set up a free 30-day trial so we can practice with the multiple currencies. Now we're going to be turning on the multiple currencies and give an overview of the practice problem. Let's turn on the multiple currencies. Once turned on, you can't turn off the multiple currencies. That's why it's good to have a practice file to be practicing in with. So I would recommend, if possible, possibly setting up the free 30-day trial to set up and test the practice problem or the multiple currencies and then add them to your current file or possibly look for a discount that you can get from a CPA or accountant or QuickBooks professional to purchase QuickBooks at that point and then set up the uh, multiple currencies. So I'm going to hit the cog drop down over here. We're going to then go into the accounting and settings. This is going to be an advanced item. So we're going to go into the advanced maneuvers down at the bottom. Attempting an advanced maneuver going down to the currencies down below. And then we're going to hit anywhere in here. You can hit the pencil on the right hand side. That'll turn it on. We're going to say that our home currency is the US dollar. You can at this point choose other currencies as then the home currency. The US dollar is what we're going to use in our practice problem. Note that if you do have some other foreign currency, you can still watch through this. It'll still be beneficial. Just reference that the home currency is whatever currency you are and the other currency has, has got to be in relation to the home currency. This is the currency we're going to be measuring, in other words, our financial statements in. Then we're going to turn on the multiple currencies. We get the warning here. So it says the uh, multi-currency may be right for you if you have financial transactions in more than one currency. Need help deciding about the multi-currency? You can check out this link to see more help there. Once you turn on multiple, multiple currencies, you can't turn it off. You can't change your home currency. So once you set this home currency, in other words, in our case, US dollars, you can't change that. Typically, you wouldn't want to, but make sure you've got the right home currency or else <laughs> that could cause you a problem. So extra fields, columns, and more are added to QuickBooks. That means that when we set up uh, different types of transactions, and this is one of the reasons why you, you might want not want to have it on, meaning if you got the right currency and you got multiple, multiple currencies on, probably won't bother you too much for the most part, except for these exceptions. But you got this added field in there you're going to have to be dealing with where QuickBooks is all, always trying to manage between the different currencies. And then we have some features may no longer be available with the multiple currencies. So I understand and I cannot undo the multi-currency. We're going to say, yes, we understand and we're going to go forward anyways. So there it is. And then I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit done at the bottom because we're done with it. Multiple currency is now on so we can test it. We could check it out by going to the cog up top, going to the lists. And then let's take a look at our currencies here. It should give us our list of our currencies. They give us by default the Canadian and uh, the Euro by default because they're, I guess they're assuming that we're going to, if it's a US dollar doing, doing transactions with our neighbor over here and so on and so forth. But if you have some other currency you want to add, then you can go up top, of course, and add all these other currencies. Whole lot of whole lot of information that we can add. If you want to remove the currency, you can hit the drop down here and De delete the currency that has been put in place by the default now if we go down to the chart of accounts down below in the accounting area and we set up our, our chart of accounts just remember the accounts that you're really kind of focusing in on if i hit the drop down and say new chart of accounts and just just to review them we're not going to add an account here but obviously the bank account one account because we might be holding foreign currencies that we want to make sure that uh, we were being aware of with regards to multiple currencies, then the accounts receivable account. This one's a little bit different than the desktop version uh, in that we're not going to label it as a foreign currency, but uh, when we create the vent, the customer, that's what's going to drive the account as for as a foreign currency type of thing and help us out with the transactions. And then the accounts payable, similar kind of thing. We're not labor labeling it as foreign currency, but when we set up the vendor, that's going to help us to set this up. So let's close this out. Let's then go down to our Excel worksheet. So now we're going to be considering our Excel worksheet. This is going to be our practice problem. We're thinking about a forward exchange contract. We're thinking about it for speculation purposes here. But also note that once you have the concept down, you could use it to mitigate risk for normal type of transactions as well. So if I have some normal transaction that results in an accounts receivable or accounts payable that I'm either going to be receiving or paying in foreign currency, 
then I'm exposed then to the risk of the currency values changing over time. I could mitigate that risk with something like a forward contract. The accounting of it may differ slightly uh, if it's just a forward contract for speculation versus kind of like a hedge or something like that. For more detail on that information, you can take a look at our advanced financial accounting course, but this will be the general kind of concept with it and how we can enter it into QuickBooks. So we're going we're gonna to imagine here we've got on 10.1x1, enter into 180-day speculation forward contract. So the 1231x1 is going to be the balance sheet date. So we're going to have to deal with the end of the period adjustments. And then on 41x2, we have the, uh, the ending of the contract. So we deliver the francs in this case and receive dollars to settle forward contract. So the forward contract is going to look like this when we put it on the books. Basically, we're going to have a receivable and a payable on the books. We're imagining that we go to the broker and we say that we want to put the receivable on the books and a payable on the books. We want to be receiving and we're actually going to not talk about francs here. We're talking uh, pay. So I think we're going to be dealing with the Mexican pesos here. So in any case, same kind of concept here. We're going to put on the books that we want to be uh, the receivable is going to be in U.S. dollars and then we're going to have the payable in the pesos so at the end of this we want to be receiving then we're going to say 5,000 uh, mexican pesos at the end of this at the end of this process so when we put it on the books we're going to set up a receivable that's going to be in the u.s dollars and we're going to have a payable that's going to be in the pesos both of them becoming due at the same point in time now the trick is of course when you think about putting this on the books you would think then that you would put it on the books by taking the current spot rate. And that would be the, the rate that would typically be in QuickBooks. But, but no, we're not going to use the spot rate because the exchange broker is going to say, yeah, I'm not going to use the current exchange rate. We're going to use the speculative rate as to what we think the rate will be at the termination of this contract. So it's still a market rate, but it's not a rate that we know for sure. In other words, we know the spot rate for sure because it's today. And that's what the currency is exchanging for today. If I'm thinking about 120 days from now, the broker is going to say, I'm not going to use the current spot rate, but we'll, we have a market that is speculating what the exchange rate will be. And that's what we're going to have to use then. That's where it's going to be a little bit different. We'll have to grab that forward rate, probably not from QuickBooks or not from QuickBooks, but in some other location. Then we can put the receivable and the payable on the books using that forward rate. And that's what we'll put it on the books for. And then the receivable in this case will be in dollars. So we expect then to receive $3,700 from the broker in the future. The payable then is going to be on the books in pesos. So we're going to pay in the future in foreign currency uh, for $3,700, which is the equi equivalent of 5,000 pesos. So we're going to pay 5,000 pesos, which is the equivalent of $3,700 as of the point in time we put it on the books, not using the spot rate, however, but the forward exchange rate. That means that we're going to be paying in pesos. So what's what's the estimate or what's the bet that we're putting down at this point in time? We're wanting then the pesos to become weaker as compared to the dollar because we put it on the books. 5,000 pesos is $3,700 at this point in time. If the pesos get weaker and we pay 5,000 weaker things 120 days from now than they were at this point in time, then we're gonna we're gonna benefit. We're, so we're paying something of a value that's weaker than it was when we first uh, put it on the books, and that's gonna result in a gain. So this is basically betting that the there's a weakening in the peso as compared to the U.S. dollar. And so now note we're doing this at this point just as a speculative a speculative bet. But also realize that you could see a situation where you could use this as, as like a hedge or a mitigation of risk. Meaning, for example, if you did normal kind of transactions with uh, a Mexican company and, and say you have a receivable on the books due to us selling goods, for example, and having a receivable on the books that we expect to be paid in foreign currency, the receivable would be exposing us to risk. One way we can mitigate the risk is then do some kind of forward exchange contract to basically uh, net out the difference between the receivable and the payable. We might look at that a little bit more in a future, con a future problem, but you could see what the concept would be here. So the difference, of course, would be when we put the receivable on the books, we would use the spot rate because that would be a normal kind of transaction. When we put the forward contract on the books, we got to use the speculative rate. So it's not a perfect 
mitigation of the risk, but it could still work as a mitigating factor of the risk. So that's how we can use this in a practical way for business purposes, although we're looking at it now as kind of a speculative play uh, as we put it on the book. So that's going to be the concept. We'll put it on the books here. Then we'll have to do an adjusting entry at the end of the year. That's going to be adjusting the, the foreign currency part, which is the payable, to what it needs to be as of the end of the year. Then we're going to have it actually be paid off and we'll look at the transactions in the following year with the foreign currency, then uh, the forward contract becoming due. So that's going to be the idea. If we go back on over into QuickBooks, we'll do that step by step. And then we'll go into QuickBooks and add uh, our information for it in a step by step process as well. First, adding the foreign currency and then thinking about how we're going to record the initial transaction, doing the adjusting entry and then uh, the maturity entries.